Be Sabbath Church. Thank you. Um, yeah, please stand for the scripture reading. We'll be reading out of uh, Matthew chapter 13, 1 through 9. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. A great multitude and, uh, and great multitudes were gathered to, together unto him. So that he went into the ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the waysides, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not not much earth, and forwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they were withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into the good ground, and brought forth fruit, and some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him eat, let him hear. Amen. And you may be seated. like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the joy of this glorious God my sin not in part 
Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, let me go to the next slide. Okay, we're going to start off with an exercise, and Mads is going to read the first side, and uh, we're going to read the second side. Does God love you? Yes, he does. Do you love God? Yes, I do. If you love him, why not serve him? Serving him means serving others. Loving him means loving others. But we must sacrifice self and we must die daily. Okay. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that you gave us today. And please help us to do good. Amen. By the Sea of Galilee, a multitude of eager people had gathered to see and hear Jesus. The sick and the sinful presented their cases to Jesus with hopes of being redeemed and delivered. But some people only came to see Jesus and not hear him. Christ's mission was not understood by the people of his time. The manner of his coming was not in accordance with their expectations. The Jews had exalted the forms and ceremonies and had lost sight of the object that the ceremonies foreshadowed. And when the reality came in the person of Christ, they did not recognize him in the fulfillment of their types, the substance of all their shadows. They rejected Jesus. The Son of God had come, but they continued to ask for a sign. The gospel of Christ was a stumbling block to them because they demanded signs instead of a savior. Came to speak? You're walking? Riding on a donkey? Where's your horse named Bentley and your chariot named Ferrari? Are you supposed to be smacking people up, but you're saying turn the other cheek? The lady said, how could he even be the Christ with those palest shoes on, and his hair isn't even combed? Christ had come, not as a king, but as a sower. Not for the overthrow of kingdoms, but for the scattering of seed. Not to point his followers to earthly triumphs and national greatness, but to produce fruit that leads to everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, the sower and and the the seed.
A parable is a short story whose primary purpose is to teach the truth. Some believe it is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A parable is an earthly story with an earthly meaning that has a heavenly principle. For instance, there are 39 parables in the New Testament. The parable of the sheep teaches us how we are lost and our need for a savior. The parable of of the coin tells us how we are lost. The parable of the prodigal son teaches us how we can wander away from God. In the sower and the seed parable, the seed represents God's word, the birds represent Satan, and the thorns represent the cares of the world. Christ talked about four kinds of spiritual conditions. How ironic that he would use the soil of the earth to help us understand our need for God's word. We have to keep in mind the amount of time that God, that Christ spent walking this earth observing all types of soil. The birds come by and steal the word. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Matthew thirteen three to 4 How many of us were told when we were little not to walk across the grass? Can anybody explain that? When you walk across the grass, it makes a path. And when you, more people walk across the grass, more people follow the path. Some of our hearts have become hardened due to the negative influences that we have allowed to enter our lives. Our hearts have become a sea of concrete, and the word of God can't take root. And the birds come along and pick the word from our heart. The wayside here, these are the people that can hear God's word, but, not, but are not allowing themselves to be changed by the word of God. The truth of the gospel has no effect. The question of greatest importance to you is, how do you treat my message? Depending on your reception or rejection of God's word, your eternal destiny is at stake. People hear the word, but don't understand it. They do not understand that it applies to them. They do not realize their need or their danger. They do not perceive the love of of Christ. They don't realize their need for the gospel, and the truth makes no sense. In this soil type, Satan comes in and takes the word from them. It wasn't that the word it wasn't that the word wasn't good or dynamic or powerful. Satan takes the word because we don't appreciate the word. How can we how can we sit under the word Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, week after week, and there be no change in our walk, talk, attitude, or our conduct? We hear about love, but we can't practice love. We hear about patience, but we can't practice patience. We hear about forgiveness, but we can't practice forgiveness. We hear about these last days, but we're not preparing ourselves for the things that are soon to come upon us. We can know the 23rd Psalms and not know the shepherd. We can know the Lord's Prayer and not know the Lord. Satan and his angels are always around where the gospel is preached. Satan impresses your five senses with worldly thoughts in hopes that criticism, doubt, and unbelief will arise. The devil wants wants you to say, Lamont, you can't be a man of God because you are too young. And the devil wants you to say, Mads, that you can't be a man of God because you're too quiet and not radical enough. There's a Chinese proverb that says, what they hear in the east ear immediately leaves the west ear. They don't realize their need for the gospel, and the truth makes no sense. This is the spiritual condition Jesus spoke of in Matthew 13, verse 5. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away which was sown in his heart. This is which received seed by the wayside. Matthew thirteen nine nineteen. The stony ground. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Matthew thirteen verse five. There are no deep roots, yet they are full of happiness. Amen. Clap their hands. Get excited. 
they respond with joy. As soon as a little trumps, as soon as a little trouble comes and persecution strikes, they are looking for a way out. The gospel seed that was sown falls on rocky soil and it can't take root due to it being so shallow. The only hope for the rocky hearer is to be reconverted. The gospel appeals to their emotions and they become very quick to react. But when the music stops and the message wears off, so does the gospel. They have no roots. These are the people these are those people who receive the word immediately but do not count the cost. They do not consider what the word of God requires of them. They do not bring it face to face with all their habits of life. Many receive the gospel as a way of escape from their suffering, rather as a deliverance from their sin. We think claiming the name Christian gives us a hell fi- get gives us a get out of hellfire free pass. We think we can just put on the Seventh Day Adventist basketball jersey, but don't have to participate in the work when it comes to winning a championship. This is not the NBA. This is the great controversy. In the NBA, you get a ring for sitting on the bench, but you will never receive a crown unless the seed that's that Jesus sowed falls on the good ground. And we, as God's servants, must go forth to sow the seeds as well. We should have the same passion for souls as Christ did. Church, it is very important for us to allow the word of God to work in our lives. If we are rooted in the vine, the fruit we produce should bear the same fruit as the vine. It is very important that we, allow, that we don't make the mistake of substituting emotional reaction for spiritual depth. Some people are big on emotional reaction, but, when, but they have no spiritual depth. This is what Christ is telling us. We can shout and scream, but when the doctor says, you have cancer, we're ready to give up. I'm here to tell you that the devil is a lie. Greater is he that is within me that is, that, than he that is within the world, in this world. Through much affliction, the people of God will see the kingdom. At the end of the day, if you are not rooted in Jesus, you cannot bear fruit. It doesn't matter how many times you've laid hands on people, how many crusades you've done, or how much you've given to the poor. Jesus is coming back, inspecting fruits, and when he bites into it, if it's bitter, he's going to say, I never knew you. Remember, what's in the root should be in the fruit. Our obedience to God is not in our feelings. Some days, you're not going to feel like praying or singing or reading the word. In spite of how you feel, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His word shall continually be in my heart. Jesus didn't go to Calvary because he felt like it. He went because he loves you. He all... We all want to wear a crown, but we don't want to bear the cross. We have to be ready in season and out to do the work of the Lord. It costs to follow Jesus. There's going to be some turbulence along the way, but Jesus told us that we would have trials and tribulations. So those of you who are thinking that you are going to coast or skip to the kingdom, forget about it. It pays to follow the Lord. Love must be the motivation for all our actions. Love is the principle of God's government in heaven and earth, and it must be the foundation of the Christian's character. Love alone can make and keep us steadfast in the Lord. Love by itself can empower us to withstand trials and temptation. And this is the spiritual condition that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 13, 9, 20, and 21. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and a nun with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, he dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Matthew 13, verse 9, 20, and 21. 
In thorny soil, they do grow, but their growth is unproductive. The growth is not called vegetation, but they are called weeds. In verse 22, Jesus says that weeds are the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. When these, when these weeds take root in your life, they will choke the life of God's word out of your heart. In thorny soil, plants don't die as quickly as they do in rocky soil. It's the same with thorny soil Christians. Their experience progresses further than rocky soil Christians. They make an, they, they make what appears to be good, a good start. They seemingly experience justification and a new birth, but as soon as but soon they become weary and well doing. They are soon short sighted and absorbed by the cares of the world, and in the pursuit of its attractions, they neglect to weed out those things in life that they may respond to with temptation. If old habits or possibly old friends and the former life of sin are not left behind, the fruit that has started to take root will be suffocated by sin. The thorns of sin will grow in any soil. Anyone could get in a car and put it in drive, but not everyone could control a vehicle. Every Christian has a freedom of choice, but every Christian does not have the Holy Spirit guiding their choices. Without the Holy Spirit constantly helping you gain victory over sin, sin will end up gaining victory over you. Don't let the cares of the world and all its riches choke the life of God's word out of your hearts. The Bible says that we are in this world, but not of this world. There is no general consecration of the Sabbath in the world. There are a lot of SDA who don't have consecration for the Sabbath either. They don't have to work on the Sabbath, but they do because it's more money. Then they'll say, I'll stop soon. No, you won't, because the weed of the worldly cares are choking the word of God's, God's word out of your heart. What once seemed wrong is right. The drinking, the clubbing, the, premar- the premarital sex. You don't come to prayer meeting because you're tired from work. You don't come to Sabbath school because you're sleepy. You don't even come to church on time. Ask yourselves, why is that? You don't realize the cares of the world are choking the life of God's word out of your hearts. We've gotten busy burden under Satan's yoke. When you stop reading and studying God's words, Worry, anxiety, and preoccupation sets in. The deceitfulness of riches. Christ is saying to us, when wealth becomes more important than God's word, when it becomes more important than your health and your family, then it's a problem. First Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. The deceitfulness of riches can make you forget where your help comes from. We forget it's not about what we have, but who has us, and that would be Jesus. Whatever attracts the mind from God, whatever draws the affections away from Christ, is an enemy to your sanctification, as well as your salvation. Luke twenty-one, thirty-four. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. The truth is, we can't change ourselves, but the power of choice is ours to determine what we will become. Can God trust you with more, more money, more talent? Can he trust you? Church, don't let the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke God's word out of your life. This is the spiritual condition that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 13, 22. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. He also that received seed among the thorns is that he that heareth the word and the care of and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. The good soil. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew thirteen eight nine. This is the part of the parable that has no disappointment. This is the person that has a sincere truth to know, 
sincere desire to know the truth so that he or she may obey the truth. One that has faith in the word of God because without faith it is impossible to receive the word. The Pharisees of Christ's days had hidden eyes and closed ears. The good ground here receives the word not as the word of men but as, but as it is in truth, the word of God. When Jesus described the good soil, he said, good soil produces, it germinates. That is what we want the word of God to do in our lives. We should be a fruitful people that produce good growth. And we have to study God's word for that to happen. God did not ask any of us to maintenance ministry. God has called us to be productive growing ministry every single day. It's sad to say, but when it comes to the word of God, a lot of us are not growing. We think that we are doing ourselves a favor by tuning in to all these programs and tuning into Moody. We need to be careful of that. People are using God's word to justify all sorts of things that we do in our every, sing every day. Young people, pick up the word and read for yourselves. Read what God has to say. Only the individual who receives the scripture as the voice of God speaking to himself is a true learner. The good ground hearers hear the word and keep it. Satan with all his agencies of evil is not able to take it away. The word of God often wars with man's sinful tendencies and character. But the good ground here in his receiving the word accepts all its conditions and requirements. His habits and practices are brought into submission to God's word. The devil knows the Bible better than us. He can preach better than us. He can give a Bible study better, better than us. He can make us do some mean and nasty things in the name of scripture. The Bible says in Isaiah 8.20, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this world, word, there is no light in them. God's word will speak for itself. Christ wants us all to have good soil, but some of us has, have to be broken before God can use us. For instance, orange juice has to be shaken before it can be taken. Oysters have to be interrupted before they can make pearls. Rose petals have to be broken before you can smell the sweet fragrance that it produces. So we have to have our soil turned over, unearthed, excavated. We want God's word to work in our beyond the surface. It's, God, it's God's word that changes us. God formed us, sin deformed us, and God has transformed us. Church, we have to hear and accept. There is a big difference between hearing and listening. It's not a matter of choice when it comes to hearing. Hearing is going to happen all the time for us unless you're hearing impaired. Sound comes naturally. But listening is something you have to choose to do consciously. Listening leads to learning. You can hear words without listening, and, when, and that's when misunderstandings happen. We hear God's word, and we think we've gotten so familiar with it that we stop paying attention. Satan has been sowing the seeds of error. Men sow to the flesh, and of the flesh they reap corruption. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. He who by faith receives the word is receiving the very life and character of God. These are not my words, or Pastor Campos' words, or Elder De La Pena's words. When you are reading the Bible, these are God's words. And God has said that his word will not return unto him void. It will, do what it, will, it will do what it was sent to do. The heavens were made by his word. The galaxies were formed by his word. Fish, fishermen became fishes of men by his word. Sinners become saints by his word. The sun is king of the day and the moon is queen of the night by his word. In order for us to produce good soil, we have to stay in his word. God is coming back, inspecting fruits, some 100-fold, some 60-fold, and some 30-fold. Church, it's time that we decide to follow the Lord in all we do. So what type of soil are you?
Dear Lord, thank you for the Sabbath day and help us to be the good soil. Help not to help us not to be rooted out and help us to absorb all your word instead of being choked out by the daily trials and temptations we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to praise the Lord for these two young men. Amen. Amen. We want to praise the Lord and we want to thank the Lord. We want to continue to encourage our young people in God's word. Amen. How many of you all were blessed today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we have uh, an inspirational video coming up, uh, followed by... I believe it's our closing song, and then we're going to have an appeal today because I know God's word has spoken to someone's heart today. Amen? Amen. Hey church, this is a um, this is a song called "I Am a Friend of God," and this is our closing song before we have our appeal. But we all want to be known as a friend of God, amen? amen. So we just want you all just to just sing with us and just allow the Holy Spirit to to just work on your hearts at this time. That you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. 
Do you want to sing with us? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Say, I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of I am a friend of And I'm a friend of I am a friend of He calls me friend If you're a friend of God Come on and sing I'm a friend of I'm a friend of God I am a friend of God He calls me friend Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. Say, I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Say, I am a friend of God. That again. I am a friend of God. And I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. One more time. He calls me friend. Amen, amen. I was asked to sing with them, by the way. I wasn't expecting that. (laughs) But thank you guys very much. Praise the Lord today, church. I'm so thankful we serve a God. We serve a mighty God. How many of us are thankful that we serve a mighty God today? You know, some of us, God has brought from a very, very long way. You know, um, all we have to do is just remember what God has done for us in the past. That's what we have to do. So today, we're going to open up the doors of the church. And if there's someone here today um, who hasn't been studying their word and, and maybe you're looking to get a little closer to God today, just stand to your feet. Maybe there's someone here today that's interested in Bible study, you know, because sometimes we can get caught up. In the cares of the world, you know, we can get caught up with some things and we haven't taken the time to really spend that quality time in God's word. Maybe there's someone here today who's just looking for a new beginning. Somebody here today might just be looking for a new beginning. 
I'm going to tell you where that beginning starts. That beginning starts with Christ right now. Because I know the Holy Spirit has touched some of us today in some form or fashion. It's not by chance that, that we had an opportunity to hear from two young men about our spiritual condition. It's not by chance. So we want to thank the Lord for always never giving up on us. He's always long-suffering. He will always make a way for us to, to understand uh, how far we are away from him. He will always make a way to open up our eyes and our hearts. If there's someone here today who would just like to say, you know what, Lord, I love you, and I just want to take a closer walk with you. If you're ashamed or if you're a, a, a quiet person, you know, just say a prayer within yourself. You know, but what we have to do, we have to thank God for these moments. We have to thank God for, for his word. Because where will we be without the word of God, first of all? Just imagine, ask yourself, where would I be without God's word? You know, maybe we have some young people here today who want to take the next step and want to join a Bible study class or has been prepared already for baptism. I don't know. But now is the time to just talk to the Lord. Just ask the Lord. Let the Lord know. Don't ask him. Just let him know, Lord, I need some help. There's a lot of things I could and should be doing that I'm not doing. And I need the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to help me. So we're going to close out our prayer. We're going to close out with a song called, what's the name of it? <laughs> I'm getting old, Pastor Kelpos. What is it? I give myself away. How many of us I wanna, are ready to give ourselves to the Lord? Well, let's all stand and we're going to close out with this song. It's called, I give myself away. If you want to give yourself away to the Lord at this time, now's your opportunity. You don't have to share it with anybody. Just make sure you share it with the Lord and let him know, Lord, I'm yours. I'm not my own. I belong to you and I give myself away. Give myself away. Amen. Amen. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Somebody here today that wants to give themselves away to the Lord, let him know. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away. in your hands. Lord, my life is in your hands. And Lord, I've been waiting to see Lord, your desires I'm revealed in my life. myself I give myself away Amen
Amen. I give myself away so you can use me. How many of us want to be used by the Lord? Amen. And he wants to use each and every one of us. I give myself away so you can use me. Let's sing it again. I give myself away. Amen. Amen. I give myself away so you can use Father in heaven, Lord, we have a room full of people here today, Lord. We came today, Lord, because we trust you, because we believe you, Lord, because we'll never forget what you've done for us in the past, and we will never forget, Lord, what you have in store for our futures. So, Father in heaven, Lord, today we just came to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, and we want to give ourselves away, Lord. Our lives are not our own, Lord. They belong to you. And today, Lord, collectively, we are asking, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit to reign supreme in our lives, Lord. Some of us are struggling with some, with some emotional barriers, some financial obstacles, Lord. But in spite of everything, Lord, we give ourselves to you today, Lord. We give ourselves to you, Father in heaven, because we know and we believe, Lord, that once we give it to you, Lord, we have nothing to fear. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for these two young men who represented you well today, Lord. And we're praying for all of our young people, Lord. We're praying for all of our young people, Lord, that are here and those that are not here, Lord. We're asking, Lord, for you to stop by their way, Lord, and give them some words of a encouragement, Lord, and return them back to their first love, Father in heaven. Lord, we have some that are sick here today, Lord, and we're asking, Father in heaven, in faith, Lord, that you will send healing their way. Lord, we want to lift up the hands of our pastor today, Lord, as he has two churches, Lord, and he needs encouragement as well. We want to lift up the elders in prayer, Lord, all of our church members, Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for all you do for us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give ourselves away to you today, Lord. Our prayer is that you will hold on to us, Lord, in the palm of your hands and never let us go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. 